Um, I don't know. I, I mean, maybe, maybe I could go back and try do that as my next streaming project. But honestly, th that then I would end up dropping a hundred and thirty dollars to to play Metroid Other M, and that would really hurt. You know. But at the same time, I think I could actually give the game a fair shake and a fair analysis. Odog is saying that he wants to go back and play the uh, Pool of Radiance. Uh, I'm not going to get into it here, Salmelo. Uh, I, I know you want to discuss the, the characterization of Samus in that game, but um, quite frankly, the character the characterization of Samus in that game was completely fair to everything Samus had had been through. Samus is a monster, okay? Samus is a frigging monster. She is a terrible person. Oh, uh, yeah. O-Dog is pointing out that they just released all the uh the forgotten realms gold box games on gog again uh i got i got the uh the D, &D anthology back when they released the whole thing on cd mad adventure is saying here's the thing all these games like metroid and castlevania etc they all feel very samey to me anytime i see them <sighs> you know what that's not unfair i but but you know why it's but you know why that is? Okay. So here's the thing. Okay? If you don't... Like, I hate country music. Alright? I absolutely hate country music. It does nothing for me. Country and western music, or whatever the hell it's called. And the, the problem with it is that because I hate it, it all sounds the same to me. Okay, you can play... If you're a country country music fan and you say, oh, but this one, you have to hear this one because this one is awesome, and you play it for me, it's going to sound the same as every other country music song to me because I don't enjoy it, so I'm not inclined to, re to recognize the nuances, the things that make that song different. You know, I'm not a fan of what country music does in general, so I don't recognize what different country music songs do compared to other ones or anything that and you know it's the same with it's the same with video game genres if you're not a fan of the metroid castlevania exploration style um type game then you don't see what this game is doing differently from super metroid and what uh symphony of the night is doing differently from super metroid and until someone points it out to you and even then it's an academic discussion but it's nothing more than that you know yeah salmelo was saying he you know salmelo couldn't tell tell you what sets different racing games apart. And it's it's exactly like that. It's your you recognize things in the genres you love that other people won't. Upper right, you know, because they tickle your brain in certain ways. Hey, R.L. Richie is here, saying R.L. Richie apparently spent the whole day reading my articles, um, and this is the perfect way to top it off. I agree, the perfect way to top off my day is flattering me, because my ego, while it is huge, it is never so huge that it can't use just a bit more stroking. Uh, O-Dog is saying there was one racing game where the main character was in a coma and he could take over the minds of other, of other, of the drivers in the other cars. Yeah, that was, uh, Driver San Francisco. Um, I never played it because I'm not much for driving games, but I actually, okay, so, 
don't judge me too harshly. I've been playing Watch Dogs. And the thing is, not just playing Watch Dogs, but I've actually been enjoying playing Watch Dogs. I mean, I know it's, you know, we're all supposed to hate that game. Especially because it didn't live up to anything, um, anything that it promised. You know, not even remotely. And some of it is just outright stupid as hell. But there are a lot of different... You know what, it's, again, it's, it's one of those games that had a lot of different things in it. And if it had spent more time on any one of those things, just doing one of those things, it would have been better, it would have been more focused, and it also hung out too long. You know. Um, it, it also just stayed around too long. It, it was too long a game, and... But one of the things I'm discovering is that I've been going through, because, again, completionist, uh, which is really a problem. You know, um, the problem with being a completionist in, in a game like Watch Dogs is that there are so many little side quests and missions that map square is just never going to get filled in, is it? Oh, well. Um, there was just too much of the game. And when you're when you when you feel you need to do everything, um, like Skyrim is a game that I loved. I absolutely loved Skyrim, but I uh, I couldn't play it after a while because I'm the sort of person who wants to see all the content and do all the things. And there was just too friggin' much in Skyrim. I didn't even know that there was actually a like. Uh, a, a main quest. Okay. Somewhere in here is a way to get. Yeah, Sal. Uh, o Dog and Salmelo were talking about the realism of the hacking in uh, in Watch Dogs. And you know what? I don't give a crap. Because the thing was, that whole line of sight hacking, bouncing from camera to camera, um, and using that to scout out areas and solve puzzles, that was a fun mechanic. Okay? I don't give a shit that it was not a realistic depiction of hacking at all, because it was a really engaging mechanic. As some of my favorite missions in Watch Dogs are the, um, uh, the, the gang hideouts, where you have, you know, you are outnumbered and outgunned and you have to use your you know all the line of sight hacking crap to go through the you know to get to find the one guy in the hideout who's like in charge and knock him out without killing him yeah um I'm not really even paying attention anymore. See, this is a bad sign right here. That, um, you know, we're spending most of this episode talking about other games. Um, it's kind of sad, really. But then, I guess, you know what, too? I guess I can't really hold it against this game, because I did make the choice to just go back and explore all the places. I hadn't been yet, or that I had already been. So, you know, maybe that's on me. If, if, if I was following the, the path forward, it wouldn't be a problem. But, at the same time, you know, oh, that's just a shortcut to where I've already been, huh? There is nothing new in this room, is there? I, ex I just covered this whole room again to get nothing new. Um, anyway, how did I get on this subject? Oh, driving games. That's the thing, is, like, I've been doing all the fixer missions, which are all the, the, the various different, like, driving side missions, where, yeah, you know, like, steal a car and deliver it to a particular location in a certain time limit, steal a car and distract the police so somebody can commit a crime elsewhere, and all that shit. And I'm actually finding that I really do like the, um, the, the driving to the point where I'm actually tempted to try out um, an actual sort of open-world-ish driving game. 
and my first thought was to check out Driver San Francisco because uh, it was one of those, you know, every so often a game will come along that um, even though I said that, you know, if you're not a fan of a genre, then, you know, all, you know, every, every instance of that genre is going to feel the same. Um, but every so often, something will come along in a genre that will actually transcend that, that will actually manage to capture people who are not fans of the genre, who will never, um, will never quite, you know, uh, you know, be fans of that genre. But I am really tempted to try out Driver San Francisco now. O-Dog is saying that, uh, the driving in Watch Dogs was a lot better than many of the GT style games. Well, you know that Watch Dogs originally started its development as a driving game, right? Um, it was, uh, it, it was changed partway through production. I, I don't remember the reasons. But, um, that's why it had such a good driving engine. Ah, uh, you see what I did there? See, we're now nearing the part where I decided to go back. Um, no, yeah, that's true. O-Dog is saying he didn't know that, but it is true. It started as a driving game, um, and that's why driving was such a huge focus in the game. Uh, and then the, all the other elements were added to it. Man Adventure is saying, did I ever play the reboot video game on PS1? Are you kidding? I owned it. Um, and it was terrible. <laughs> it was, it was really bad. It was, uh, um, basically it was, it was all scavenger hunt. You, you were basically just flying around on the zip board, right? That's what they called them, the little, uh, the little, uh, the, the, the disc that turned into a sort of hover hoverboard was their zip boards, right? So you would you just flew around on the zip board explore basically doing scavenger hunts in different areas. And that's the that was the whole game. It was it was like a really terrible skateboard game. It was honestly it, it felt like there was like a skateboard racing type game. Uh and at the last minute, somebody decided to turn it into a licensed tie-in. Right, I can only teleport to two blocks. So I think this is now the spot where I had decided that it was time to go back and, and backtrack. Mad Adventure is saying, yeah, you played it for the cutscenes, though. <laughs> You know what the, like, speaking of games that have just a little bit too much going on, um, and this actually ties into the, uh, the game that, what, what would I stream next? Yeah, Reboot, uh, O-Dog is asking what was Reboot. Reboot was the animated, the computer animated Canadian cartoon show about the people who lived in the computer. Okay, the, um, basically there was, uh, every computer was a city unto itself. And the inhabitants, um, and the inhabitants would, uh, they were, they were like, they basically, they were system resources. And the, the big issue, apart from the fact that they were constantly at war with these two viruses that had infected the system, uh, which actually ended up having a lot more interesting backstory in, you know, in the third season and then the, what, what they called the fourth season, which was actually a pair of, um... Is the stream getting jumpy? If the stream... Yeah, I'll restart the stream if it's getting jumpy. Uh, I'm right at a save point now. So. I'm seeing it too. 